In the shadowy depths of prison, a melting pot of criminals with unique pasts and varied sentences exists. But among them, a select few bear the weight of a particularly abhorrent crime, making them the prime targets of collective hatred and swift retribution. The chilling fate that awaits convicted pedophiles behind bars is often brutal and swift. Join us as we delve into the harrowing stories of six child abusers who face their ultimate doom. Number one, John Keoghan. Both judges released Gagan on personal recognizance. He's due back in court next month. In Cambridge, Laura Clarizio for the 10 o'clock news. He is news. not guilty. John Gagan went to court today where he faced his angry accusers. Fox 25's Mike Baudet was there and he joins us now with the story, Mike. A disgraced Catholic priest was at the heart of a sexual abuse scandal involving the Catholic Church. Born on June 4, 1935 in Boston, Massachusetts, he was ordained in 1962. Keoghan served in numerous Massachusetts parishes until 1993, when he was removed from active ministry following the emergence of child sexual abuse allegations. The Boston Globe's Pulitzer Prize winning Spotlight team uncovered in 2002 that church officials, including Cardinal Bernard Law, had permitted Keoghan to continue working in parishes despite numerous abuse reports. Ultimately, Keoghan was found guilty of child sexual abuse and incarcerated. While serving his sentence in 2003, Keoghan was assaulted and killed by fellow prisoner Joseph Drews on August 26th. Drews claimed that upon learning the identity of his fellow inmate, he viewed him as a trophy and spent an entire month in protective custody. Yet, one proved dangerous to the other within a supposedly secure facility. Drews' background was scrutinized to determine a motive for his actions. He was reportedly a member of the neo-Nazi Aryan Nation hate group and was serving a life sentence for murdering a gay man who offered him a ride in 1988. It seemed he harbored a deep-rooted animosity towards homosexuals. Additionally, Drew's father disclosed that his son had been repeatedly molested as a child. Number 2. Jason Turnbull was incarcerated at the Saginaw Correctional Facility in Freeland, serving a 10 to 15 year sentence for third degree sexual criminal conduct. On January 13, 2016, he was murdered in his cell by fellow prisoner Timothy Dicker. Dickerson had a strong possibility of release just six months after killing Turn, but that prospect vanished when he was convicted of the murder and received an additional 20-year sentence. Prison officials reported that no weapons were found in the cell, and the cause of the altercation remained unclear. However, it was possible that the conflict arose from Turnbull's criminal sexual history. He was discovered unresponsive in his cell by prison staff who attempted to revive him, but he was pronounced dead roughly an hour after the incident triggered alarms within the facility. An investigation ensued, revealing that the two inmates had a disagreement leading to a physical altercation and ultimately Turnbull's death. Dickerson did not contest the charges against him and now resides in the highest security tier of the Ionia Correctional Facility, Level 5, where the most infamous and violent prisoners are held. Number 3. Nicholas Anderson became the third casualty of Rocky Allen Beeman's spree targeting sex offenders in prison. Anderson was incarcerated as a sex offender when Beeman took his life on January 22, 2017. Authorities discovered him strangled and his neck slashed with an improvised weapon. Beeman had openly proclaimed his hatred for sex offenders and vowed to continue killing them until he was sentenced to death row. In May 2018, he even penned a letter to Christopher Patterson, a 14th District Judicial Circuit judge, stating that slaying sex offenders provided the best feeling he had experienced in a long time. Beeman also pledged to persist in eradicating every sex offender he encountered until one of three outcomes occurred. He was killed, he exhausted his supply of targets, or he was placed on death row, where he could no longer harm anyone. Beeman even informed the judge that he would dedicate his subsequent killing to him unless he was assigned to death row. In 2012, Beeman murdered registered sex offender Brian Hunsicker. He stalked him for several days within the prison before cornering him in the shower and proceeding to stab and choke him. Reports indicate that Beeman stabbed Hunsicker up to 80 times. Prior to these killings, Beeman was serving a life sentence for murdering a woman, but ultimately received a death sentence. Stay with us as we reveal the chilling details of these notorious cases. And don't miss the bone-chilling twist in our final story that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about the dark and unforgiving world of the prison system. Number 4. 
Charles Parker, a registered sex offender, was murdered by a vigilante duo who arrived at his doorstep on July 2013. He had been convicted twice, first in 1991 for sexual assault of a child, and then in 2003 for third-degree sexual misconduct. Jeremy and Christine Moody approached Parker and his wife Gretchen at their residence, feigning car trouble before assaulting the couple and fatally shooting them. The pair was discovered dead in their apartment on July 22nd, prompting a thorough investigation. Police obtained images of the suspects from the home security cameras, using them to track down the couple. Jeremy's bald head and distinct tattoos made it easy to locate and arrest him, and he was soon charged in court alongside his wife. Initially, they displayed remorse, apologizing for their crimes and expressing. Number 5. David Kiever was imprisoned in 1996 for child abuse offenses committed in 1994 and released in 2009. However, he was rearrested in 2010 for failing to register as a sex offender as required by law, resulting in a sentence of eight years and nine months. In July 2019, he was killed by a fellow inmate with whom he shared a cell. Jimmy Ray Carruthers, 44. Hours later, during routine midnight checks, a prison warden discovered Kiever unresponsive on the floor of his cell. The prison's medical unit later confirmed his death. An autopsy revealed the cause of death as manual strangulation and traumatic injuries to the head and neck, with his face, neck, and ribs severely bruised and broken in the attack. Carruthers reportedly stood by the cell door and was taken into solitary confinement by officers after the warden called for backup. This case was unusual, as both the victims and assailant were sex offenders. Carruthers had been in custody since 1994, when he was found guilty and sentenced for multiple counts of sexual battery on a minor and child abuse. Had he not committed the murder, he would have been released in February 2021. Instead, he f in October 2022, Juan Villanueva was sentenced to life in prison for the aggravated sexual assault of a child under 14 years old. However, he was found unresponsive in his cell on a Friday morning in February 2023. He was attacked and killed by his cellmate, Ramon Escobar, who was also serving a life sentence at North Kern State Prison without the possibility of parole. Escobar had pleaded guilty to two counts of first-degree murder in 2018 after viciously killing five people, including his aunt and uncle, during a one-month murder spree before being apprehended by the police. Investigators revealed that he had killed his relatives before fleeing Texas and then started attacking people in Los Angeles and Santa Monica while homeless. Prison officials discovered Villanueva during routine checks, immediately called an ambulance, and attempted to resuscitate him, but he did not survive. Escobar was known following the incident, Escobar was moved to restricted housing as investigations continued to determine what happened and potentially charge him for his crime.